QuickBooks Desktop 2021 New Features. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop. New Features, QuickBooks Pro. Note that we are focusing in on the desktop version as opposed to the online version here. And more specifically within the desktop version, we're focusing in on Pro and Pro Plus. It can be confusing to think about the different types of QuickBooks software that there are. We will have another presentation that will break that out in more detail. But the bottom line is that the first two categories you kind of want to think of is, do you want an online software? Do you want a desktop software? If you go to the desktop software, then there's going to be more categorizations within the desktop software that you can pick in order to suit your needs. The big bucket by far for most businesses is going to be the Pro and Pro Plus bucket. And that's where we're going to be focusing in on here. So again, the Pro and Pro Plus bucket will be the big bucket for basically the desktop side that we're taking a look at here. And then we'll take a look at QuickBooks Online at a separate time. And we'll be comparing and contrasting the two at a separate time as well. Now you can find a lot of this information at this link. Or you can search in your favorite browser such as, as Chrome or Firefox or something. The uh, Firm of the Future. So you can search Firm of the Future. And you can find some of this information for the 2021 information for uh, QuickBooks. And the first change and the most important change, in my opinion, is the improved bank feed. So the improved bank feeds are having a look and feel that's a little bit more like the online version. Now note that the online version and desktop version have their pros and cons. We'll talk more about the pros and cons of them in a future presentation. But one of the pros of the online version has been that the bank feeds format has worked a little bit more seamlessly and has a little bit better look and feel, in my opinion, than the desktop version. So it looks like they put the desktop version in alignment more to the look and feel of the online version, which is a benefit should be an improvement. This is also a significant change than prior periods. So if you are using the software from a prior year, note that one of the benefits of the desktop version is that if you if you're these changes if these updates aren't in an area that's significant to you and your bookkeeping needs it may be possible for your you to use the same quickbooks version without updating each year which is one of the benefits of having the desktop version however if you use bank feeds this is something that you probably do want to update this is something that would entice me to want to update to the new version if I'm going to be using uh, the bank feeds. So that's the big one in my opinion. We're just going to list out the rest of them and then we'll go over them in a little bit more detail in the future slides. So we have the customer groups. We can set up the customer groups. We have the automated statements, customizable payment receipts, improved matching workflow for QuickBooks payments, PDF preview for email forms with attachments, improved employee setup screen and payroll users and payroll liability reminders. And we have the receipt management. And note that this one is for the plus only. So not just uh, QuickBooks Pro, but QuickBooks Plus. I'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to that item. Now note that you could find many of these, maybe not all of them, but many of them on the Firm of the Future uh, website. So you can search that in your favorite browser, Firm of the Future, or you can go to this link here and you can get some more detail on some of like the marketing for QuickBooks 2021 new feature information. Improved bank feeds. So once again, the improved bank fees look like the biggest change in my opinion, automatically categorize bank transactions with more detail by using enhanced rules, batch editing and improved matching. So here's kind of like the look of it. It looks a lot more like the online version. So if you've worked with the online versions, this is a example of the bank feed screen, which is gonna be more like uh, the online version. So we will go through this bank feeds in uh, future presentations in more detail. And it'll be a lot different than uh, the prior bank feeds in the prior software in 2020. And prior to that, once again, if you're thinking about moving to uh, 2020 or some prior version of the software to 2021, and you are going to be using bank feeds, then this could be something to make the change. Uh, prior to that, if, if you don't have some of the features that are going to be necessary every year as they update from year to year, if those th aren't things that are going to significantly imp impact you, then sometimes you don't really need to make the update of the, of the software. But if you're using the bank feeds, then this could be something that would entice you possibly to be making the update from the prior software to the new software. Here's another example just of the bank feeds uh, type of screen for the rule list. So then we have the new receipt management. And now this is going to be for plus and premier accountant. So plus there's going to be pro and then there's pro plus. Now I don't want to get into a lot of detail on this again, the pro and the pro plus, but 
because some of these features are a little bit different for them. Uh, note that QuickBooks is Pro, QuickBooks Pro, QuickBooks Desktop Pro was kind of thought of as the big bucket where most of the users of QuickBooks would be going. That's what they would normally be using. The problem to Intuit is, the Intuit's the owner of QuickBooks, is that the QuickBooks Pro is on, you know, you can buy you can buy the software and then it's just basically yours. It's not on a subscription model in essence. And they're trying to go to a subscription model. So they wanted to do that clearly by trying to get everybody to move from the desktop version to the online version. That's what this is what it looked like to me looking at it, right? They wanted to go to the online version, set up the set up the um, subscription model. But there are some benefits to having kind of a desktop portion to it as well and some of the functionality with the desktop version is better it's still enhanced to the online version and, and some of the things on the online version works better there's some benefits to being online so there's pros and cons of both of them so i don't think the move at this point can easily just be saying quickbooks can't just move on to the online version i think they're gonna have to you know keep on improving the desktop version and you know try to take advantage of both of the benefits of using an online software and a desktop software but i don't think they like the fact that uh you can buy the you know you buy the software and then don't have that kind of subscription model so they're trying to move away from that with the desktop version and that's kind of what the plus looks like to me so it looks like the plus means that you buy the desktop version and you buy the desktop model so it's still going to go on your on your computer you'll be using it from the computer you'll have the features of the desktop uh, format the look and feel of the desktop format but you'll be on a subscription model so that you'll be able to update and you'll update the software uh, each year is kind of what the look and feel looks like it's going to go to so that's going to be the difference between the plus and then if you buy just the plus and i mean if you buy just quickbooks pro and not quickbooks plus you know you could go to basically and just downloading the software to your computer and uh, and then you you might be able to go a few a few years if you don't need some of these updated models these updated information that's happening each year you might be able to go a couple of years before you buy a new uh, QuickBooks system and uh, QuickBooks will typically not be at, at some point they'll stop the support for the software but again the software will still be working because you bought the software and it, it's on your computer now and you could still basically use the software so let's just take a quick look at the at the two here so you can see the new marketing so you can see what i'm talking about so i'm on the intuit website intuit is the owner of quickbooks we're looking up quickbooks pro and if we go on down to the quickbooks pro now we're looking at 2020 here because 2021 you would think would be uploaded in this section by the end of the month if it's if it happens to go along with what normally has been the standard in prior years so we got quickbooks pro plus here so notice quickbooks pro plus has that added kind of thing here with the quickbooks pro plus that's where they're trying to say that most people will be obviously they want quickbooks pro plus plus the payroll if you need to have payroll but payroll's just an attachment it's like another app on on the quickbooks pro plus and then but and then if you want just the quickbooks pro you go down here now they have it down on, on the bottom and say hey you can purchase the one-time payment of quickbooks pro so if you wanted to purchase QuickBooks Pro and you only needed the software to do the certain things that you needed it to do that don't include the QuickBooks uh, Pro Plus and that uh, that uh, don't include the updates that are necessarily going to happen uh, each year, then you can buy just a one-time download and then possibly use it for multiple years as you have been able to do kind of in the past. But you'll note that this QuickBooks Pro is kind of on the bottom now <laughs> and it's not what they're clearly marketing uh, which is on the top here, which is the QuickBooks Pro Plus, which is going to be on basically a uh, per year kind of renewal type of process. Now, also note that if you're working along with us, you might try the sample, the free sample version, which again, at this point is at 2020. But um, they, hopefully they'll update that at some point as well. And this will basically be using QuickBooks Pro. So this is a type of method that you can do for just practice. If you wanted to get a look and feel of their software before purchasing it, then you would basically be working with QuickBooks Pro and you wouldn't have the added feature. Okay, knowing that, let's go back to this, to this feature here. This is kind of like the new feature, the new receipt management uh, for plus now again this would only be on plus they're going to try to differentiate some features on plus than pro to get to try to get people to go to that plus model to take them to that renewal kind of model 
Now, this seems like a really neat feature to have, and they've advertised it a lot on the online version. has a has a similar thing with it where you can basically take your phone and you have an app on the phone and you can take a picture of the receipt, which is kind of neat because then this receipt can be uh, taken and put into your QuickBooks software and it can be used to then enter a bill and whatnot and you can match the bill with the payment and you can actually have the receipts. Now, from my, from my perspective, using QuickBooks a lot, it's not as big of, of a big deal. I mean, it's kind of nice that you have the receipt in there if you wanted the receipt as an audit tra trail and you can have the receipts that would be would be attached in there. But as far as a, a flow process, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure a lot of people really use that as much as it, I mean, it looks like, it looks really neat. <laughs> it looks really neat, but I'm not sure it's fitting into the actual flow process that many bookkeepers are, are actually going through. So I'm not, I'm not sure it's as big a deal as you would think. Although again, it's, it's neat because it has a, a, a phone app. So automatically create and categorize receipt expense transactions, uh, use of QuickBooks desktop mobile app to capture receipt data. So you can use your phone to take the receipt, picture of the receipt, photograph receipt, import and review. So you got to take a photo of it, then you import it to the software and it goes into the software and then you can review it and basically use that data. Attach digital receipt image to expense transactions for audit trails. This is what I kind of really like on it because not just for making the recording of the transaction, I'm not sure that might you know, save time, but I'm not sure. But I, I do think it's kind of nice that you would have the audit trail with the receipts. Although a lot of the payments that you're making right now are digital anyways. And so there is a pretty solid audit trail in that case with the bank because you know the, you, it'll it'll track who he, the payment was because it's not a cash transaction this would be more useful if we were doing a lot of cash transactions because then you do need the added information with the with the audit trail due to the fact that cash is not very transparent in terms of an audit trail. So then we can categorize, review, and manage multiple receipt transactions at once as well. And so here's here's kind of a look and feel of it. So obviously you'd, you'd take a picture of the receipt and then you'd upload it and then you'd have to basically upload it to the software and so on. So then we have the customer groups. So customers groups, we can create rule-based customer groups based on fields such as customer type, status, location, sales rep, and balance. So we can take this these information that have been set up when we set up our customers and then set them up into a customer group based on this information. And then we can add, we can manage and automate communications to them based on these customer groups. So that's pretty nice. Can be used to, to automate sending of invoices or statements. So we can use these groups to then further customize how we're gonna basically automate uh, our sending of statements to make that process more automatic. So here's just a look and feel of how you would basically set up these groups. We have the fields that we have here. Once again, the sales rep, the status, uh, the credit limit, the open balance. We have the country, state, uh, sales tax code that we can set up the groups with. And then we could set up basically our groups with that information. So automated send statements. So we can automate regularly sent statements and emails. So we can make the process a standard process that we can do automatically customized to different customer needs. So we can make the process customized for different customers. Statement can be reviewed and sent from QuickBooks. QuickBooks will use the predefined email templates configured during the automated statement setup. So you do the automated statement setup. You're going to set up your templates, which will help you to automate the process of sending out this information. Different templates can be used for different customer groups. So then you could set up multiple templates and then you can uh, combine that with the customer groups that have been set up to automate the process of sending these items out. Here are a few screenshots of this process. Next, we have the customize and format payment receipts. Now remember the payment receipts is going to be a type of form. Let's just recap the receive payment form just for terminology purposes within the flow or the customer flow here. We're going to have the invoice process. So we're going to give out the invoice. We do the work. We give out the invoice to the customer. The invoice is going to increase the accounts receivable. The other side is going to be revenue or sales. Then we got the accounts receivable outstanding. We're going to receive a payment on and that's where the receive payment will take place. We're going to receive the money from the customer that paid us on account decrease in the accounts receivable and the other side either going into the bank or going into undeposited funds in which case we would then deposit it now with the invoice we've always had the ability to customize the invoice to put our logo on it and make whatever customizations 
we need on the invoice. But then when we actually get the payment, we haven't really had any kind of uh, customization that we can do here. Now note the process, probably the thinking in QuickBooks was like, well, look, when you have an invoice, that's, that's when you're going to actually send it out to the customer. Or if they were to uh, go directly into your store and pay you at the same time, you would give them a sales receipt. And so that's the, the document that would be going to the customer for sure. The payment receipt, maybe they were thinking, well, that's kind of more like an internal document where that's just to record the receipt of the payment that we got. Maybe we don't need a, a document to give to somebody. But the receipt payment document can be useful to verify the fact that we have the receipt payment. And it could be as, as nice as just like a thank you thing. You can just say thank you that you paid us for the accounts receivable or something like that. It'd be nice if you could customize that once you get paid just to have one more you know touch of communication with uh, the customer. So we've always had the ability to do that customization with the invoice over here. Now you can do it with the receive payment. You can make it like a thank you letter or something like that. And then you can you can have that added bit of communication with uh, with the customer when they pay you on those sales that were made on account. So we have the uh, includes the ability to add the logo so we can put our logo on it can create multiple formats to use for specific customers. So we might have different customer needs that we can have different kind of thank you letters. You can even put it like maybe even like advertise your next service. You know, look what we're doing. You might want to buy this thing or, you know, <laughs> have an upsell on it or something. I don't know. But you can customize that now. And here's here it is. Now it's going to look very similar to the to the invoice. So if you look at it, you're like, that looks familiar. I mean, I've seen that before because you, you've seen it on the invoice. <laughs> and now they're, they're doing it on the receive payment, which is nice. So that's a nice improvement to have. So again, the look and feel of it, you can see how you can customize, put your logo on it looking similar to what you could do for an invoice. So we have invoice and attachment review. Preview the invoice and attachments from the send invoice view in QuickBooks. So when you send the invoice for, you know, within QuickBooks, they're, they're making it easier for you to kind of review what you are sending out and, and uh, before you actually do the send out process so you can see the attachments and review them before you send them out. So no longer need to manually open each attachment outside of QuickBooks to confirm accuracy so you can open them up uh, and again this is something also i think if you're using this feature where you're sending out the information uh, within through quickbooks to send it out rather than basically you know saving the forms as a pdf and then sending out uh, the email from from your email then this can be a, a big improvement because it allows you to kind of preview and verify a little bit more easily than has been done in the past